Welcome to Ask God's Generals, your channel for inspiration and answers to life's questions. Thank you for joining, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video to bless someone today. Another video just dropped which we will be listening to shortly by God's servant Apostle Johnson Suleiman. He talked about pastors listening to this message, Apostle Johnson Suleiman is a messenger of restoration, a man of God from God as a gift to the earth. He has been called by God to raise sons and daughters who will be ministers. So this message is to guide ministers of the gospel, this message is to caution pastors and make them understand God more. Apostle Johnson Suleiman said, which of you intending to build? A tower does not lay a foundation and count the cost, any kind of grace you desire and you want to experience in ministry, it is possible, you can get it but count. The cost. Whatever you want to become, is it a voice in your generation, the great evangelist, an awesome pastor, prophet, teacher, or apostle, it is very possible, but you must be ready. To count the cost, a glorious ministry will cost you everything. Why did Apostle Johnson Suleiman say pastors should hear this? I believe that it is because of what is going on around the body of Christ today, a lot of pastors are erring and dragging the name of God in the mud. They do not represent God properly, just the same way God spoke to Job's friend Eliphaz in the book of Job chapter 42 verses 7. He told them that they have not spoken well of him the way Job did. For Apostle Johnson Suleiman to emphasize that pastors should hear this, then it means it is very important for you to listen to this message of liberation. God doesn't come down physically to warn people or put them on the right path in life, what he does is that he sends his prophets to proclaim his word to them. Please, I will love you to watch this video to the end to hear all that God has to say through the mouth of his servant, Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Remain blessed. The beauty to stand, which of you intending to build a tower does not lay a foundation and count the cost up any kind of grace you, ex you, ex you desire you want to experience in ministry is possible you can get it but count the cost whatever you want to become a voice in your generation an outstanding evangelist an outstanding pastor prophet teacher and apostle is very possible but you must be ready to count a glorious ministry will cost you everything we see Catherine come and ministry most times and people ask her, what is the price of the anointing? And she say, it costs everything. Is it fasting? Is it prayer? No, sir. What is the price of the anointing? Everything. It will cost you everything. Which of you intended to build a tower? A tower. Don't have any shortless mentality. Your mentality should be expansive and extensive. Have a tower mindset. Have a ministry that stands out. Have the consciousness of a ministry that is projected. Which of you intended to build a tower? I decree you will not have a myopic and majestic ministry. I decree you will not have the ministry that no one will take notice of. Your ministry will be a tower. Amen. It will stand the test of time. Amen. It will be projected in your generation. Amen. Which of you intending am i talking to somebody count the cost whether it's able because the passers by ministry has passers by not everyone that comes will stay not everyone that's under the brackets of the man that god has given you will remain they are passers by am i talking to somebody they will hurt you they will cause you pain Betrayer is the only offense an enemy cannot commit against you. My statements can be passive if you are not a deep thinker. I preach in church and some people watch it and they are wondering why people are sitting down. 
people were watching and saying, did you hear what you were saying? I said, no, they were not thinking and processing it like you were doing. Betrayer is the only offense an enemy cannot commit against you. Am I communicating here? Build down the cost. You got to sit down and tell yourself the truth. Can I go on with this work? That's what got me by count the cost. Understand that it's expensive. Understand it will take you and cost you everything. And that's why I love Jesus. You see a flinch of honesty. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I won't deceive you. A truth may cost you some things, but a lie will cost you everything. A truth may cost you some things, but a lie will cost you everything. If it were not so, Jonah's story is a story. When I read the story of Jonah, I read everything. I was just confused. Because you ask me, the story of Jonah should not be in the Bible. It started with a man who ran from God. It ended with a man who was angry with God. It started with a man who ran from God who was swallowed by an animal prepared by God and at the end of the day the same man obeyed God and ended angry with God so what was the essence of all that I love the Bible the Bible is a reality book it's, it's a perfect book with imperfect stories to prove to you that imperfection is real but perfection is a reality. The Bible is a perfect book with imperfect stories to prove to you that imperfection is real. But perfection is a reality. I look at the story of Jonah. God called Jonah, gave Jonah an assignment. And Jonah saw the dictates of the call that God has given him. And he said, no, not this. There are so many of us who are not content with our assignment. We desire the assignment of another. You see a prophet, you have become a prophet. You see a teacher, you have become a teacher. You see an evangelist, you have become an evangelist. You envy the call of others. Forget it, the Bible says, let every man abide in the calling where he has been called. Every man has a proper gift. There are so many of us. Whenever we see people manifesting, we think that is what God intends of us. Jonah was called by God. Lift your right hand towards heaven. I decree for you. I make this declaration by the power of the Holy Spirit. Nothing, nothing enticing, no matter how fashionable, whether it's in vogue, in the name of Jesus, nothing will take you from the place of your assignment. Hey, that which you have been called to do, nothing will take you from that assignment. Hey, if your amen is louder, you are the one I'm talking to. Jonah, Jonah got into a boat. When he entered the boat, a ship, it was going somewhere. It was going somewhere. And the Bible said he paid. It's fair. They collected the money, but they were carrying a wrong passenger, a dangerous passenger. They collected the money, but the man with them was not the right person. But as far as he paid his fare, the fare he was qualified to be with them. Ladies and gentlemen, can we stop a particular phrase? Stop telling people what you bring to the table. Wrong people can bring things to the table. Can we stop this phrase? The fact that somebody has what he or she brings to the table doesn't mean the person deserves your connection. Can we stop this phrase? That somebody makes donation and is supporting the church does not qualify him or her for a position. What do you bring to the table? One statement I've always made. I've always told people, avoid people that have nothing to lose. Until God told me, say, even people that have things to lose can get stupid. So that somebody is bringing something to the table does not qualify a position of honor. A position 
that that person become a progenitor such a person become a first the first of the assignment by reason of it it depends if you know where god is taking you to you understand that what that so-called helper is bringing is depends do you know the value of man man do you know the value the what what is man that thou art mindful of him the first act of disobedience was in the realm of spirits the first ever act of disobedience was in the realm of spirit. It was spirits that rebelled in the pre-Adamic pre existence. Before Adam, spirits are, have rebelled. You must understand that before you think of the story of Adam, a man called Job had existed. If you understand scripture, you know Job is the first book of the Bible. That was the period where Satan would walk on the surface of the earth. When the sons of men gather, Satan will gather. When Satan will come to fellowship with Elohim. Are you following what I'm talking about? Spirits rebelled. So God had a plan. God said, what do I do? These spirits have rebelled. That was the period where there was a conspiracy against the Almighty. A conspiracy against his agenda to send Jesus the Christ who was his anointed. That is what David saw when he said, when he said, they, they, they take counsel against God and his anointed. But he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. That was the pre-Adamic existence. When there was a conspiracy, so what God did, what God said, God said, I'm going to do something. I'm going to raise man. And he came down to the Adamic existence. And God said, let us make man. God saw man as the alternative. God said, I'm going to use man. I'm going to become man. It's going to be that restrictive force. That no spirits can operate in him without his will. No spirits. Because ask yourself. Satan made angels rebel against God. Can I ask you a question? What did Satan tell them? Angels that were created like him. What did he tell those angels that they believed him and followed him? Have you sat down? These are angels that were made like him. How smart and deceptive was he that he could tell them what to make them rebel against Elohim? Because angels have no will. They can't make. The, they have no will. If you tell an angel to kill, now they will kill. They won't ask you why. If you give instruction to an angel, say, do this, don't do it. They follow your command. They are not wired. You see, they are, they, are, they are called cherubs. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy. That is why God prefers men to worship him than angels. Because angels worship him, they have no choice. Involuntarily. Holy, holy, holy. So when God sees a man worshiping him, God values it more. Because the man has a will not to worship, but still choose to worship. Oh Lord, nobody's following what I'm saying. Are you following what I'm saying? So God now said, I'm going to raise up man who has a will, who can put spirits in check. Why? Because spirits cannot operate without a human body. You are, at night you are praying, Raga, ga, da, ga. you are destroying kingdoms, you are shattering nations. Hell is angry, hell is offended, hell wants to respond to you, but hell cannot. So you wake up in the morning and that's your neighbor now pours water in front of you. What have you done? She said, hey, this house. That is hell. They need a human body to respond to what you did last night. That is hell. That is hell. They need a human body to fight back to what you did last night. And you are not sensitive. You come out, what, in this house? And the woman says, yes. Bah, bah, bah. The next thing you are in front of a police station. That is hell. Because they cannot operate without a human body. I wish I was talking. So God now said, the agenda, that's why he said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish, not the fishes. It's the only one fish you have in the sea. Over the fish of the sea. Over the fowls. Our likeness. Look at that. 126, Genesis. God said, let us make man in our what? After. And let them have dominion. The fishes. Fish. Over what? And over the the fowls. And over the cattle. There is a fish that controls the fishes. 
there is a fowl that controls the fowls. There is a cattle that controls the cattle. Apostle, what are you saying? And God said to Moses, go. Stop Pharaoh. For he goes to the river to worship. Stretch out the rod towards the sea. And he stretched out his rod. And the fish died. Not the fishes. The water was turned to blood. It wasn't color that changed. It was something that died. God didn't change the color of the water. God killed the fish. Pharaoh was connected to a marine power. Pharaoh was heavily invested in the marine world. If he, 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 he actually had a marine contact, he raised up his daughter in that dimension. That is why the daughter went to the river to worship. Pharaoh's daughter going to the river to worship where she saw Moses was not an act of divine obeisance it was she worshiping and crying out to the god of the sea that she had no child so when she saw moses she thought that that god had given her a child that is why she called him i drew him from water she felt that that god had given her a child that is why the name moses is not an israeli name it's an egyptian name I drew him from water. The river God has given me a seed. You can see why Moses' life was complicated. His background was cursed. He encountered Pharaoh's daughter. Cursed. He had battles of the altar all around his life. I'm trying to tell you the journey of the call. Are you following my, my, my teaching? So when God now raised man... And say man is going to be a custodian because man has he said man god wired man so that man can resist spirits and put them in check what is man that that mindful of him that made him a little lower than elohim to put him in check so what the devil the devil do the devil decide to also make man his target make man his vessel so that since the almighty god is called god because he has hold over man he wants to be another God to have control on man. But he can't do that without man's will. I'm not sure you are getting anything at all. So that is why all the elements of the flesh they are there. Even as a minister of God, there are certain things you manifest and you think these are spiritual promptings. But these are elements of the flesh. You pray for somebody who's not healed, you are now troubled as if you have become the healer. You pray for somebody, they don't have the fruits of the womb. You are now worried as if you are the giver of children. That's a prompting of the flesh. A prompting to prove to them that you are called. I'm coming there, I'm coming there. Prompting of the flesh. Every one of you is a pastor. Let me advise you. You saw the man that was by the gate of beautiful that Peter and John prayed for. Jesus saw him and passed to. And yet the Bible says he healed them all. He was around in the days of the ministry of Jesus. Because the story of the man by the gate of beautiful happened three years after the ascension of christ and yet the man was born like that and he was 40. so as at when he was 30 37 and all that he was already there bible said they laid him there daily so and christ has ministered in that temple so he passed him so if you think you must solve the problem of everyone in your church I wish you are getting something here today. <laughs> Jonah ran. He ran. And he met people like him in the ship as they were on the journey. Everybody you have met in your life, you met them in the ship. Relationship, mentorship, friendship, partnership, courtship. Fellowship, membership, discipleship. You met everybody where? In the ship. We are all in the ship. Friendship. Two friends in the ship. Our ship is sailing. Our ship is on a journey. But the truth is 
not everyone in your ship is going where you are going. I preached a message some time ago. I called it dangerous passengers. <laughs> I said many people are carrying dangerous passengers. A dangerous passenger is one that infuses himself into your calling. When people come to you and say, God sent me here to help you for a while. Never project them. I just came to this church to help you for a while. Never project them. Let them keep obey. The people like that are crisis, crisis. <laughs> there, are, there are people who their assignment is to infuse themselves into people's assignment and cause a disaster. Those are bombshell. God has sent me here to help the work. God has sent me here to support you. He may be a pastor. He may be a pastor. Dangerous passenger, one who is so hardened. Daniel sat down in that ship and the Bible said, this is a, this is a man who was called genuinely by God. So I asked myself a question. Why did Daniel stop, start running? If you study your Bible, the Bible says when Daniel had answered and responded to the call and he went to Nineveh according to the words of the Lord and the Lord had mercy of Nineveh, that, Jonah, rather, Jonah said, he said, this is why I ran. I asked myself a question. If you read Genesis from, sorry, Jonah from chapter 1, you will not see where he discussed it. It was in his heart. He said, this is why I ran. Where was the discussion? One of the problems we have are unexpressed feelings. Bodies we bottle up. When a minister of God has bottled up so much without anybody to talk to, a day is coming, there will be a crisis. All the years of unexpressed feeling, and because of the kind of ministry and the kind of generation we are in, people are bottling up things because there is really nobody you can talk to. We have so many people around us, yet we have nobody. Jonah was there and there was a crisis but he sat down quietly. The name Jonah means a dove. He was as gentle as a dove. But it was a crisis about to happen. Anytime you are not satisfied or convinced with the callings and the assignment the Lord has given you, express it in prayers. Anytime your vision is beclouded, express it in prayers. If after praying you still do not understand, look for a mentor. I'm confused as to the assignment of the Lord. This is where unexpressed hurt, unexpressed emotions. Daniel, Jonah, sorry, Jonah kept it in his heart. Jonah was overwhelmed. He said, God is a God of mercy. I will not go on this assignment lest I become a caricature. The Bible says, and Jonah was in that boat. And the boat was shaking. As though it was about to break. If you read verse 5. As about to break. Jonah stayed back in that boat. One of the callings that God has given to me. One of the assignments on my call that God has given to me. Is to teach people how to love him. Despite all odds. It doesn't matter what you experience. It doesn't matter the shakings you see. To just keep loving him. To just keep following him. You must just understand that God has the best in mind for you. His intentions for you are noble. His intentions for you are of good and not of evil. It takes loving him to assess him. When God was trying to explain to us how to walk with the tripartite being, how to walk with the Trinity, he said the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. When he said about the Holy Spirit, how do you walk with him? Communion, intimacy, fellowship. When he said about Jesus, how do you walk with him? Grace. Grace. Whenever you see Jesus, you see grace. But when it's about God, love. Love. The grace of our Lord Jesus. The love of God. No one can enjoy the goodness of God outside the platform of love. The journey of the called. One of the, the as, as you move on in this your calling, one of the pains you are going to see is the pain of wrong association. The pain of encountering the wrong people. The pains of wrong association. There are people who specialize in using the anointed. 
There are politicians. Their mandate is to use ministers. And ministers have made their anointing commodities. I've seen pastors come to me in their ministry. There are members who need help. But they come with politicians who are running for, for office. Why? Because they believe that if this man gets blessed, he can help me. And 90% of the time, they disappoint them. 90% of the time, they get disappointed. Because God wants to help you, but he doesn't want men to share his glory. God wants to help you. He doesn't want anyone to take the credit. Am I com communicating right now? As soon as Jonah entered the boat, crisis entered. As soon as Jonah entered the boat, Jonah came alone. But before he left, the mariners lost everything. I decree anyone who is currently or yet to infuse his or herself into the mandate that God has given to you or into your life as a minister of God, I decree in the name of Jesus. So long their intentions are not pure, their expectations will not stand. Amen. So long their intentions are not pure, their expectations will not stand. Amen. I say it will not stand. Amen. I say it will not stand. Amen. I say it will not stand. Amen. Any contact that makes you look, listen, any contact that makes you lose what you have worked for is not a plus. Any contact that makes you lose what you have labored for is not a plus. It's not a plus. It's not a plus. And Jonah came in to the boat and they lost everything. And when I was studying the scripture, the Lord stopped me and began to talk to me. They lost everything. They threw all their labors there are so many of us who have lost a lot just because of one wrong association. They lost everything. They prayed. It wasn't answered. They cried. It wasn't answered. You've screamed out and yelled out in your, in your secret place to the Lord in prayer. No change. Because there is a wrong person. You have prayed and fasted. No. No. It's as though your heavens are closed because there's a wrong person. God's servant, Dr. Bishop Mon, was sharing with me that one day he was praying, he discovered that the income in the church was just so minimal. He kept it, was normal. And he was praying. And the Lord told him to change his treasurer. He has told you the story. As soon as he changed it, he said the next Sunday, the income was 10 times. Ten times. Ah, ah. He was wondering. The same attendance. You see this spirit. That you have. I'm called by God though. I'm not interested in the offering. That's why they are killing you. I don't even ask for the offering. I don't check what the income. That is why you have been, you have been used. You should ask. You should investigate. A man of God in this country. He has a counting room. And those who go there to count, he sold a special trouser for them without pockets. <laughs> and I asked him, why did you do that? He said, people need to make heaven. We have to help them. I'm not suspecting them, but I'm only threatening their resolve not to steal. The lost, there are many of you hearing me who can relate with what I'm saying. You've lost a lot because of just one person you gave access. You've lost a lot, but in the name of Jesus, before you get back to that assignment, God will take Jonah off your boat. Amen. I said, God will take Jonah off your boat. Amen. 
God will take Jonah off your boat. Amen. God will take Jonah off your boat. Amen. I've said it. The fact that someone is contributing to your assignment does not mean he has the best in mind. Jonah paid his fare. Man of God, someone can give you a suit, give you shoes, give you money. But they want something. There's an agenda they have. And as ministers of God, we say human nature, we are naturally drawn to give us. We are naturally drawn to those who we feel are pillars. We are susceptible to their advices. Susceptible to their counsel. The fact that someone sows seeds to you, makes contribution to your assignment, does not mean they have your interest at heart. And when they looked at Jonah, they suspected that Jonah was the wrong man in the boat. But yet they left him and continued trying to bring the boat back to the land. They knew. They knew. They knew that something wrong had just happened. They knew. You see, in this journey of our calling, we must understand emotional boundaries. Emotional boundaries. There are people, <laughs> there are people the Lord has spoken to us about, but yet they still occupy positions that we put them. God has spoken to you, heaven has instructed you, you have seen all the signs, you have seen all the symbols, but emotional boundaries, they have been there for years. They have been there for months. They have contributed so much to the assignment. They have done this and they have done that. When you do not know how to create boundaries emotionally, as a minister of God, you keep getting hurt over and over again. There are people that need to go. There are people that need to leave certain offices. There are people that need to be disciplined. There are people that need to be put in check. It's not your job to fix people. You are not a technician. There are people you can never fix. You can never change. You can never make them better. They don't intend to be better. They don't intend to be better. They don't intend to be useful. No matter your effort and your labor, they are not ready to be useful. I wish somebody is following what I'm saying. There are people, let them be themselves. When people show you who they are, believe them. You cannot change certain people. They have made a covenant to be who they will be. Let them be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to stay within the confines of my notes. Because if I don't do that, I will just drift. Anything you do in life, you've got to look out for yourself and your mandate first. For those of us who are careless and not careful, everyone who comes in as a member of the flock has got an alternative. If your ministry sinks, they go somewhere. They are all, they have alternatives. If your ministry sinks, they go somewhere. Oh God, Anyone who is around this assignment you have given to me, who is attracting evil to my work, whose presence is causing my work pain, making us suffer losses in the name of Jesus, take them out. Can I say this to you? Will you never forget? You cannot stop the wind when the target is still in your ship. Can I repeat that? You cannot stop the wind when the target is still in your ship. Send them away. Only the wind didn't come for you. Someone attracted it. And so long that person is under your cover, 
There are so many of you in the sound of my voice. Somebody, Pastor Benny Hinn was talking. I was watching Pastor Benny Hinn's um, um, teaching. And he said there was someone that was in their ministry for 17 years. Following them to crusades. Following them everywhere. But was a spy from the government. A spy. Crisis upon crisis upon issues upon issues. And he was wondering what is all this? Until the Lord revealed who that person was. There are people that come to meetings planted as agents of the devil. 2017, 2018, there was a particular media house in Nigeria. They also operate from in America. Who were on me, they were looking because anything they say, people kept saying, bring evidence. Bring evidence. They tried everything. They tried everything. Nothing was working. There was nothing they didn't try. You know they've tried everything on me. You should be aware of that one. Oh, they tried everything. This lady will come. That lady will come. That one was not working again. They say ritualist. There's nothing they have not tried. They tried everything. Nothing again is new. This particular newspaper house, when I prophesy on people then in America, they, they paid people to be attending our programs. When I prophesy on people in America, at the end of the service, there are journalists who go and interview the people. Because they needed to hold something. And they spoke to one of our, our leaders. They said, the truth is this. We have been to apostles for program in the U.S. When it comes to the gift, the man has it. So the man said, you are saying this. He said, we, this person, this person, this person, this person. He said, oh, you were there? He said, we followed them to their house. To be sure that the address he mentioned was the address they live. You wasted money. You wasted energy, wasted time. They are in meetings. A journalist saw William Brown people being healed in his meeting. This one said, Oh, I had a problem. My leg is gone. It's gone. Brown said, Oh, you are healed. I had this on my chest. It's gone. Brown will say, You are healed. And the journalist told the friend, Say, Watch now. I'm going to go out. And the journalist said, He's going to tell Abraham that he was healed of cancer. That Abraham does not see anything. He's not a prophet, anything. That you see that he's going to go there and say, Oh, he's healed of cancer. You will see Abraham also tell him, Oh, you are healed. As he stepped on that stage, Abraham said, What has the Lord done? He said, Oh, I'm healed of cancer. Abraham said, Oh, Okay. You never had cancer. The man said, No, he had cancer. He said, He never had cancer. He said, No, he had cancer. Bram said, Well, since you have said, He told us, Since he has said that he had cancer, so let cancer come on him. The man collapsed. Cancer fell on him. He left that state with cancer. His friend came out. Mm -hmm. two ladies were on the line for testimony in the ministry of a great man of God one of them came out praise the Lord praise the Lord I want to thank the Lord God Almighty for what he has done and started he said our GS called me to his office and was trying to have kind of knowledge of me. The GS was sitting down there. And he was trying to do this. He said all kinds of nasty things. He said, but the Lord delivered me from his side. I want to advise us to be careful. I want to answer that the whole auditorium was quiet. That wasn't what they told the interviewer. Who asked them what their testimonies was. Everywhere was quiet. Pin drop silence. And the GS stood up. He said, Amen. Nobody responded. GS. Amen. He said, Our God is a God of mercy. But equally, He's a God of judgment. He's a God before whom nothing hurts. While He was talking, the power of God picked the girl, slumped her on the floor. Pam! She passed out. The next girl screamed and started begging that they were paid. They were paid. Now, I ask myself a question. Politicians are stealing money. People are doing all kinds of nonsense. Why is the church your target? You know why? Because the church has the answer. I repeat. 
you can't stop the wind when the target is still in your ship you can't stop the crisis when the target is still in your ship you can't stop the onslaught when the target is still in your ship in the name that is above every name everyone attracting wind contrary wind the wind of shame the wind of disaster the wind of reproach the wind of setback the wind of retrogression anyone attracting such wind to the assignment god has given you to your talents your gifting your calling to your mandate in the name of jesus i kick them out of your life I kick them out of your life. 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 They are there. When the Lord will begin to open your eyes. To see the person behind the crisis that almost shook your walk, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed how close that person was to the altar. You'll be amazed how close that person was to the altar of the altar. God just started giving you some level of breakthrough. You are trying to celebrate it, then somebody comes. You do you know I was talking to a man of God before I came on the pulpit, and I we were just talking, and I asked him a question. I said, What's going on? I'm not on ground, I don't know what's happening. So just what's going on? And he began to talk to me and talk to me. And he said a few things. And I asked him, you know, God is blessing him so much. And he's going through, I mean, financial blessing so much. And he's going through, certain people are looking at him. And they say, oh, this blessing, there is something under it. Oh, there's something you did. And I asked him a question. Why is it that in the body of Christ, when people suddenly have interventions, you will see a full-blown spiritual man of God. This is somebody who has the Holy Spirit. Is ascribing such lifting to the devil. Is that not an abuse to the unction you even carry? Is that not even an abuse to the unction you carry? Sir, let me say something to you. There are certain levels of wealth Satan cannot give. He doesn't have it. The wealth that come with peace the world that comes with stability, Satan doesn't have it. We ascribe manifestations to the devil. We ascribe the move of God to the devil. We ascribe certain things to the devil. Okay, this person is under the influence of the enemy and is doing well. You are under the influence of God. You are not doing well. So are you saying that the devil has become more powerful than God? Satan is using him and he's being blessed. You that God is using And you'll be surprised how people in the assignment that the Lord has given to us have become the pillars behind the crisis. Anyone who has issues with his relationship with God will always be a fault finder. People who have issues in their relationship with God will question other people's relationship with God. You see, I won't blame Jonah. Many of us blame him. When I studied the Bible well, I understood Jonah's pain. Many of us are guilty. <laughs> Jonah prophesied. And God overturned it. The prophecy never came to pass. Because that was the first time the king ordered everyone to fast, including animals. Animals fasted. Imagine a lion, thank you, fasting. Pigeon fasting. Turtle dove fasting. Chicken stayed on the spot. Animals were fasting. The king declared the fast. Even the animals, no one, everyone was fasting. What was Jonah's fear? And most of us are guilty. In the journey of the called, one thing you must watch out for is the motive 
the motive for your manifestations. Jonah wanted to give a prophecy that will be fulfilled. Not so that God will be glorified. So that his prophetic ministry will be endorsed. Oh Lord, use me. And God says, I should ask you, why? I need the prophetic anointing. Why? Many of us want the prophetic anointing so that people will know. So that when I look at them and begin to prophesy, they will know that a prophet is in town. Jonah prophesied on them. And the people cried to God and God showed them mercy. Jonah was angry. Jonah was angry because this was now a reproach on his prophetic ministry. It has put a check on his calling. It has raised and casted as passion and doubt on the anointing he carried. So it was about him. If Jonah was wise enough, Jonah would know he ran from God. He cried out to God and God showed him mercy. If God could show you mercy, why would he show them mercy? You see, as you begin to minister in the prophetic, I will give you a counsel. <laughs> Can I say this? Jonah looked at these people and stayed by a God that the Lord raised up. And was waiting to see the destruction that would be found anywhere. Can I say something? Are you sure? Are you sure you want to hear it? Not all judgmental prayers will be answered. There are people you will pray for them to die. They will not die. <laughs> I know it's harsh, but it's the truth. You will pray and pray because God has an agenda for them they are only being used by the enemy now no matter how you pray for them to go they won't go I gave an illustration something happened to me I said something and the, the DSS came that they were going to get me arrested we were somewhere in Ekiti and they came they were, were going to be arrested and all of that we were in Ekiti Pastor Elijah was in the kitty then. I was there. And someone calls me up through the intercom and said, Apostle. I said, Yes. He said, um, I have a seed for you. Some minutes to 1 a.m. I have a seed for you. I said, This midnight. He said, Yes, sir. I said, Keep it in morning. He said, No, sir. I'm leaving. I will not be in the morning session. I have a seed for you. I said, It's, it's too early. Keep it. He said, it's in a big bag. And I said, I'm not expecting a seed by 1 a.m. Wait till you see me in the program. He said, I need to leave very early because I came from far. And the Holy Spirit said, don't go downstairs. They are here for you. I do that. I get a call from the chief executive of the state. And he said, because the chief executive officer, all information has come to him. He said, where are you? I said, I'm in my hotel. I said, so, so, so people are, are there for you. Don't come down. I said, I'm aware. I sent my security men. They went there. When they saw them, they started exchanging words and all of that. And the, the man said, well, you're in my state. I'm not going to allow you to go back to where you are staying. I'm going to put you in the government house. Because anything happens to you, people are going to call for my head. So you're going to stay. I said, no problem. I went to the government house. I went on my knees. I stretched my hand outside. I said, Lord, in the next two hours, all of them dead. All of them dead. The man said, eat. I said, I'm not eating. Dead. 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 All of them dead in their cars. Dead. They would die in their cars. I was so convinced. Dead. 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 So I woke up. In the morning, we're going for the morning session. I asked Pastor Elijah, anything? He said, no, no, sir. Everything's okay? He said, yes, sir. He didn't know I was asking him anything. I wanted to hear. He said, yes, sir. Five are dead. I mean, I was so sure. I said, anything? He said, nothing. I said, you didn't hear anything? He said, nothing. Ah, okay. I got there. I saw the chief executive of the state. Sir, anything? He said, no, nothing. I said, where are those people? He said, they are waiting. 
They say, anytime you come out of this place. I said, but I'm going to a church. Why are they not coming after me? He said, no, they just want to pin it on me. And all of that. Ah, I went back to where I was staying. I said, no. I opened the scripture that I know. That you can't quote that scripture. And I'm not going to tell you the scripture. <laughs> and I, I released that into the atmosphere. Released that on them. Dead. I went for the evening meeting. I came back. I turned on the TV set in, in, the, in the room I was in. I was in the news. That was Pastor Suleiman. I was expecting death. Nobody died. I left. I asked the Lord questions. The Lord was quiet. He didn't see anything. And I left there. About two months after that, I was worshiping the Lord. And the Lord asked, took me back to what happened. He said, you felt bad. I said, yes. He said, you, you wanted them dead. Not because of me, but because of you. So that they will know that they came to touch the anointed. See your motive? And I said, yes, Lord, that's true. He kept quiet. Four years, five years. Last year, I was in Abuja. We were going for an international flight with our plane. And some of those officers were coming in. One of them came and knelt down by me. He said, I am one of, last year or last two years, see, I'm one of those who came for you that night. I said, oh, really? Why are you here? He said, calm down, sir. After I left that place, I felt bad, but it's our job. We had to do it. He said, I started seeing dreams, and I was seeing you. I had an encounter. We got to cut the long story short, sir. I'm not a pastor. And the Lord said to me, see who you wanted See who you were angry and crying that night. They are dead that seek my life. They, with scripture, I quoted though. Can the woman forget the sucking child? That should not have compassion on the son of my womb. He says, so I will not forget it. I began to quote scripture. They shall eat their own flesh. They shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. Nobody died. Because God has a plan. There are strong men that must go but there are certain people that are being used by the devil now but they have a future in God no matter how you pray for their death they will not die I, I, I'm sorry to disappoint you because this didn't sound like the prayer request you brought to this place God has an agenda what is your motive when motive is corrupted, reward is disrupted. What is your motive? His anger was that his prophetic ministry was not endorsed. The anger of Jonah was that his anointing was not confirmed. Why do you want the healing ministry? What is your motive? Is it for the salvation of souls? Or is it to prove that you are called? What is your motive? Do not seek for the gift of healing. Seek for compassion. When compassion comes, the gift for healing manifests. And Jesus was moved with compassion. And he healed them all. What is your motive? You want a great assignment, a great work. What is your motive? You want financial prosperity on that assignment. What is your motive? Put your right hand on your head. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. I can't say oh Lord. Oh Lord. I can't say oh Lord. Correct my motives. It's all about you. Put your hand on your head. It's all about you. That you be glorified. Take all of me. Give me all of you. I can you take all of me. Give me all of you. May you increase. May I decrease. 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 May you increase. Many of us had genuine motives until we met men with wrong motives. Have you studied your Bible, Matthew 13? He said, a man sowed good seed. A man. A certain man sowed good seed. A certain man sowed 
good seed. But while men slept, I don't understand. I thought it was a man who sowed the seed. The right word should have been why the man slept. Why men slept. He started alone. His seed was good. He brought wrong men. They made him sleep. Nobody's following me in this service. Go back to 24. Another parable put it forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is lacking unto who? Talk to me. Who? Which sowed good seed in his feed. Verse 25. Who sowed? Who sold? Who slept? Where did they come from? They came after the man has sowed good seed. To make, to make him feel there was no need to watch over your seed. Come on. You are carrying this thing too serious. You are carrying this thing too serious. We are passing the walk, now they chop. As God called you, come on, what are you doing? There are people that will make you feel you are stupid for investing too much in the walk. What do you have? Say, say, wait, wait, you mean with all this that's happening? What, what do you have personally? Do you have a building? Say, no. Do you have a house? Say, ah. You have nothing personal? Say, yes. <laughs> you think you have this opportunity forever? You think, oh, you, you, you are putting that in the work? A man sowed seed. But he, get con he got contact with men. And they told him, relax. Well, he slept. An enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. I pray for you. No one will corrupt your motive. Hey, 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 In the name of Jesus, your motive will not be corrupted. Hey, 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 For this is the decree of the watchers. Oh. He said, and the word and the manifestation spoken by the holy ones. Oh. To the intent that men might know. Listen to me, child of God. There are people under the sound of my voice who started well. Hey. But someone was brought into your life. A manipulation from the kingdoms of hell. And your motive got corrupted. Oh. But in the name of Jesus, oh. I make declarations over you. Oh. Your motive and will not be corrupted. Hey, I decree you 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 not be corrupted. Hey, in the name of Jesus. Hey, in the name of Jesus. Hey, in the name of Jesus. Hey, no matter your fasting, sir. No matter your prayers, no matter your intercessions, no matter the seed you sow, there are things a good heart will bring your way that prayers can bring, fasting can bring. Only a good heart. Check every man who is a high flyer in this thing called ministry. They have good hearts. Good heart, good heart. No matter your fasting, no matter your prayer, when your heart is corrupted, a limit, a, 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 a quarantine, a, a, a restriction is placed over you because of a bad heart. There are some people, the Bible says, He that received the word that has a good heart and a good conscience, a good heart, a good heart, a good heart, a good heart. How many ministers of God today can boldly say, and call out ministers who have affected them. No, they can't. They watch them in the secret. They observe them quietly. They preach their messages. They change the title. But they can never come out to say, this person is a blessing to my life. Look at the Archbishop Benson Dahosa. Of blessed memory. Great man of God. How many people that we are around him today are running with uncommon grace? How many are celebrating him? They were around him for what they could collect. They were, around, they were around him for what they could get. Now he's on. He's gone. He's off the scene. Many of them are nowhere. Some of them are nowhere. Nowhere. Because while they were around, their heart and their motive was corrupted. 
There are certain things God has held back from you because your motive is wrong. Why do you want international ministry to prove a point? Why do you want a big church to prove it? But Daniel cried out. Jonah rather cried out to God. Why? The man who sent you the assignment suddenly said, I've changed my mind. What is your problem? The man who sent you the assignment suddenly said, I have changed my mind. What is your problem? But it was all about you. Many of us, we are running church now. We are not sent to run church. Some are sent to be evangelists. But people started ridiculing them and told them there's a need to have a base. To have a base. Some are called to be pastors. But because of the pressure of pastoring, they prefer to go out as evangelists. There are so many of us today, our motive is the reason why the restrictions and the limitations we are experiencing have not given way. Our motive, our motive is corrupted. The Bible says God searched the heart. And what God is seeing in your heart is different from what your mouth is saying. What God is seeing in your heart is different from what is coming out of your lips. Your lips says, Lord, I want to honor you. I want to just worship you. I want to serve you. Send me anywhere. Anywhere. In the corner of your mind, London is there. London. 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 Anywhere. And God look at your heart. You're already pursuing a visa, a visa to Germany. He sees Germany in your heart. Anywhere. And you are going around prophets. Say, please, talk to God for me. No direction. And God say, no. Until you destroy alternatives, you can't hear my voice. Anywhere. And you have a city already in your mind. What is your motive? What is your motive? This anointing you desire, this unction you desire, is for what? This grace you are craving for, what is it for? Look at a man like Pastor Ben Hinn in Orlando, Florida. Started the church, grew to 7,000. Hosted people, hosted the Archbishop, hosted great men. 7,000 members from, from 7 to 10,000. He was worshiping the Lord one day and the Lord said, I didn't send you. 10,000. Orlando Christian Center in Florida. 10,000. Because he shut down the church. I didn't send you. 10,000. We are there miracles? Yes. Manifestation outstanding. Even the Archbishop minister there. Great move of God. But God said, I didn't send you. Because he was preaching around the world. People started giving counsel. Why not have a base? As he had the location, people gathered there. But heaven was not involved. And he was humble enough to say, God, they didn't send me. Do you know what it means to stand before 10,000 people and tell them, God, they didn't send me? Do you know what it means to stand before? You are wondering, he is 70 now and still relevant. You are wondering why. There are certain things some men have gone through in their work with God. And that's why I advise people, keep your mouth short. There are Keep your mouth short. You don't know men's covenant with God. You don't know where they met with God. You're attacking ministers, attacking, attacking, and they're still doing well. Won't you stop? Can you see how foolish you have become? You can't see how stupid you have become. Stood before them and said, God said this sin. There are churches around, there are ministries around. Look for anyone prayerfully and get involved. He said this is their last Sunday service. 10,000. And you just have 75, 74 and a half people in your church. And one thing come on Sunday. Where did you go? Say, I went to the nearby church. That pastor has become your enemy. And somebody gave out 10,000. Let them go. What is your motive? You see, when your motive is right, you can let anything go. When your motive is right, you don't cling onto material possessions. Why can't people give wrong motive? God say, I want your car. Eh? My car? When you remember, he gave you. What is your motive, sir? Why are you doing the things you are doing? We have to sit down and begin to address this. We have to sit down and tell ourselves some truths. You want a cathedral. Was that revealed to you? 
Was that revealed? Is that what the Lord told you? This is ministry, not industry. It's not your private business. Is that what the Lord told you? You want to spread and open branches. Is that what the Lord told you? The last time you had an opportunity, an opportunity to travel to America, to London, and a few families said, Sir, we want to start a branch. You said, Go ahead. Is the Lord behind it? Did the Lord instruct you? Oh my God. You may not you may not say amen to this prayer but i'll pray it for only few people are there things you are doing now that you have not been sent by heaven to do the conviction the conviction to stop it the grace to stop it are there things you are doing now and you are not sent by heaven to do no matter how far it has flourished receive the conviction to cut ties with it hey, man. in london i'm going to say this and then we'll start praying i believe god for healing tonight in london hear this as we pray I gave a prophetic word concerning somebody who was called so and so by his, his traditional native name. Nobody came out. So I went on to other cases. The Lord was just doing what he was doing. And nobody came out. I felt a little bit uncomfortable because I kept repeating it. I said, anyway, if you are not coming out, I'll just tell you what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying that you're in the UK. He didn't send you here. He didn't send you. You came here on own. And God said, you have just 30 months to leave. After 13 months, you are gone. 13 months to live, not L I V E. To live, live. To leave this place. Or after that, you are gone. Nobody came out. I said it. I noticed normally the pastor would follow me in the car and tell somebody to round up the service. He didn't follow me this time. He came later and sat down with his wife. And they were quiet. I said, What? He said, that name I mentioned is his native name. The wife has told him that she lost her peace since they started. But they are doing very well. I said, God, he's saying go back to Nigeria. I said, I'm sorry, I'm, I didn't know that was you. He said, I know, I know you didn't know. That's why I was quiet and I couldn't follow you. He said, I went to my office, I sat down. He came back, he shut down the walk. And he went to River State. Struggle, struggle. But today he's doing well. And peace restored. There are many of you doing what God has not sent you. And God cannot empower you in the wrong direction. In the name of Jesus. The conviction. To cut ties. With an assignment that is not in tandem with heaven's agenda. Receive it right now. Hey, man. I said receive it right now. Hey, man. 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 Jonah entered that city with a word. Even the king. That is what should give you joy. The king. The whole city came under fire. Because a man came with a word. It doesn't matter what happens after that. Jonah, so long you could bring the whole city. To submit to God, that is enough crown. So long you could bring the whole city to submit to God, the whole city came under fire because a man came with a word from God. God is about to release an anointing from common acceptance, an anointing that will release conviction in the hearts of men. As you begin to minister God's word, conviction will fall upon the hearts of people, an anointing to bring conviction on the hearts of men. An anointing, he said, I will make my word in your mouth fire, and I'll make the people wood. He said, As you minister the word, the word in your mouth shall be fire, and the people shall be wood. An anointing to bring the whole city under conviction. Someone can sing, someone can sing, and people will start weeping, 
tracing their way back to God. That is the blessing of your calling. But Jonah, no, Jonah wanted an endorsement for the fulfillment of his prophecy. The fact that you brought the whole city under fire, under the reverential fear of God. One of the biggest problems we have in the ministry is speaking to the same people over and over and no conviction. The other religion, the other world, what is the leverage they have over us? They have conviction. Somebody can just be radicalized for three months, only three months, and he gets explosive on himself, walks into a market square and blow up the place. Only three months radicalization. Three months. And you have members that have been in church for 12 years who can't take risk for God. No conviction. No conviction. One of the assignments of the Holy Spirit is to convict the world. Are you following what I'm saying? Daniel, Jonah rather stood to minister. And the Bible says there was conviction in the city. When people are convicted, your labor is minimal. When people are convicted, you don't tell them to give. When people are convicted, you don't tell them to work for the Lord. In the day of his power, willingness is generated under pressure. In the day of his power, conviction. That your location will come under conviction. As you return back, you will suddenly sense in the atmosphere a reverential fear of God. Little effort, much result. Minimal effort, much result. The city is coming under fire. The city is coming under pressure to submit to the counsel and dictates of God. You are going to release that grace of conviction to hit your city. The grace of conviction to hit your location. The grace of conviction to hit that assignment. Even those that God has sent to partner with you. Let the grace of conviction hit them. Let God himself begin to walk in their hearts. Let God himself begin to walk on their minds. Open your mouth and begin to talk to the Lord. Let God himself begin to walk on their minds. Let God himself begin to walk in their hearts. Let God himself begin to walk in their hearts. Rock us, 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 rock us